He's finished. He's done. It is over for Joe Biden. Absolutely. This is fatal. Documents all over town, carelessly, recklessly. Now, am I getting ahead of myself? No, no. I am so confident. I know he won't be the nominee, and I don't think he's going to finish one term in office. Here's the deal. What happened yesterday? Here's the deal. He lost his moral authority. Now, moral authority, how could a guy like Joe Biden have moral authority? Believe it or not, that's how he became president, right? I mean, he was the truth teller compared to Donald Trump and his lies. And the media reinforced that day in, day out, right? How many lies did Trump tell over and over and over again? Oh, by the way, those lists that document all the lies, quote unquote, those lists are lies. And I'm going to debunk one of those lists in just a moment. But first, um, do you remember? This was his justification. Joe Biden looked everybody in the eye and said he was a man of integrity. You know who I am. You know who he is. You know his character. You know my character. You know our reputations for honor and telling the truth. I am anxious to have this race. I am anxious to see this take place. I am the character of the country is on the ballot. Our character is on the ballot. Look at us closely. I actually was looking at him closely for decades. I remember as a college freshman when he got caught running for president and all those lies. I had this guy's number. But a lot of people didn't. They forgot. They didn't know in the first place. The media covered for him. And now we all know those people who said that this guy was the alternative, the integrity, the integrity. So we know what happened down there at Mar-a-Lago, right? The FBI raided the, uh, raided the compound, totally unjustified. President Trump, remember, had declassification authority. He arrived at Mar-a-Lago on January 20th, 2021. He was still the president of the United States, had access and authority over all of those documents. But what did Joe Biden do in that moment? Hmm? Look at the, the, con the, the indignation, the self-righteousness, remember. When you saw the photograph of the top secret documents laid out on the floor at Mar-a-Lago, what did you think to yourself looking at that image? How that could possibly happen, how one, anyone could be that irresponsible. And I thought, what data was in there that may compromise sources and methods? By that, I mean names of people who helped, or et cetera. And it's just uh, totally irresponsible. Hey, nobody's perfect, right? And people are human beings, and people tell lies from time to time. It happens. I think, actually, a lie from time to time could be forgivable. But the hypocrisy, and it's so clear-cut, and it's so easy to understand, and it's so in your face, this hypocrisy will never be forgotten, and it will never be forgiven. Classified material. Next to your Corvette, what were you thinking? Let me, uh, the, I'm going to get a chance to speak on all this, God willing, soon. But as I said earlier this week, people, and by the way, my Corvette's in a locked garage, okay? So it's not like you're sitting out in the street. So the but anyway, was in a locked garage. yes, as well as my Corvette. How could that possibly happen, to quote Joe Biden? Documents next to that silly, stupid car that he was showing off all the time. I always knew he'd be revealed. I always knew it. And oh, by the way, even this silly stunt for the cameras, I don't know if it was Jay Leno's garage or what, we got to look at where those documents <laughs> might have been found. Like everybody else's garage, it's a crummy, kind of messy place, right? And secret documents in the midst, that's unforgivable. Hey, the documents at Mar-a-Lago, they were being maintained according to National Archive and FBI specifications. They were in communication about it. The FBI visited and said, hey, we want one more lock. They put another lock on. And then there was this. People know I take classified documents and classified material seriously. Here he is again, banking on your naive assumption that he's a good guy that he has integrity because he's Scranton Joe, because he's been around for a long time. We've got his number. I've always had it, you've always had it, but now even Democrats are realizing this is too much. Why are we defending this guy? He's finished. 
And then not only in the garage was there a secret document, but also in his, uh, his parlor, his pantry. What was it? They discovered a small number of documents of classified markings and storage areas and file cabinets in my home and my, in my, my, my personal library. His personal library, personal library, garage, office downtown. Where else? Where else? What else did he do with these things? What was he doing with these things? And he's being very, very guarded in his speech, reading from a script. But, you know, there are tells. They've been bragging that they told the uh, authorities right away, as soon as they found these documents, they called the cops or they called the National Archives. They told everybody. Watch when he says that again. Watch what happens. When you're, when you're lying, sometimes you're nervous and sometimes you stutter. I think that's the real story behind Joe Biden's stutter. Take a look. Department of Justice was immediately, as was done, the Department of Justice was immediately uh, uh, no notified. It's a little trouble with that one, huh? Immediately notified. These things were hanging around as long as five years, potentially. Actually, six years. Six years. And I noticed this on Tuesday when he was in Mexico. What's up with all the lawyers? What's up with all the lawyers, huh? Cleaning out an office? When my lawyers were clearing out my office at the University of Pennsylvania, they set up an office for me, secure office in the Capitol. Lawyers. Why would lawyers be emptying out Joe Biden's office? Lawyers. What about your secretary? What about one of your grandkids? What about you, actually? No. And in Washington, D.C., he chose lawyers, plural, to do it. How much do they make? <laughs> Something like $1,000 an hour. Joe Biden could be in more trouble than we even know about. And I want to emphasize this. You know, a lot of folks think that when you're an ex-vice president of the United States, you get all kinds of perks and privileges. Not really. On January 20th, 2017, you got incoming President Trump, outgoing President Obama. Both of those gentlemen will receive Secret Service protection for the rest of their lives. Uh, at that point, Joe Biden was just an ex-vice president of the United States. And he could expect, along with Mike Pence, if he doesn't become president, and he won't, Secret Service protection for six months. And then that's it. <laughs> and then you're on your own. And he never, ever once, while he worked in government, had declassification authority. No, it's just not there. Um, and what about Hunter Biden? If there's a Biden scandal, Hunter must be involved. And this one, too. Yes. So who owns Joe Biden's house where these secret documents were found? Is it Joe Biden's? I'm not sure. I've never actually seen the deed. I've never seen the mortgage. But I have seen this, and you will too. Hunter Biden filled out a background check to buy a gun, and he claimed that he owned this house. And he just might. He just might. From the laptop, we know that their finances were intertwined. Hunter complained about all the stuff that he had to uh, buy for Joe Biden. And oh, by the way, he was getting notices about all the bills that had to be paid at his father's house, quote unquote. Take a look at this. And keep in mind, this is when the father was vice president. All these repairmen coming by fixing things. What about when he's an ex-vice president of the United States? Anybody had access to the house. It wasn't a big deal. It's not like going to the White House. You don't have to go through Secret Service checkpoints. You just go there. And maybe you see the documents. I don't know. I don't know. Back to where we started. He's finished. This story may actually diminish in the next couple of weeks. But that doesn't mean it goes away. And that doesn't mean that Democrats are taking a good look and saying, why are we defending this guy? <laughs> and look at the lies, OK? If I know this, they know this, OK? Everybody knows this. He can't stop lying about anything. Everything is, is dishonest everything about him, his whole career. And I mentioned earlier when I first found out about Joe Biden, uh, we don't play this all the time, but I think we have to from time to time. Joe Biden, as a sitting United States senator running for the presidency, said this, and everything he said is not true. The 
<laughs> what law school did you attend, and where did you place in that class? And the other question oh, is, man. could you quickly? I, I think we. I, I think I probably have a much higher IQ than you do. I suspect. <laughs> I went to law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. In the first year in law school, I decided I didn't want to be in law school and ended up in the bottom two-thirds of my class and then decided I wanted to stay, went back to law school, and in fact ended up in the top half of my class. I won the international moot court competition. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees from undergraduate school and 165 credits, only need 123 credits, and I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours if you'd like, Frank. And look at that face. Look at the smug face. Everything he just said was a lie. But you see that? How pleased he is with himself. He wouldn't be for long. Back then, the media, they weren't afraid like they are today. Biden now concedes he did not graduate in the top half of his law school class, that he does not have three degrees from college, and that he was not named outstanding political science student in college. Newsweek says Biden actually went to school on a half scholarship ended up near the bottom of his class and won only one degree, not three. Joe Biden ranked 76th in a class of 85 at the University of Syracuse Law School. I mean, this guy comes off this whole thing as a flyweight. Now Biden says Newsweek is right. His memory had failed him. How do you come back from that? How do you come back from that? Maybe you come back from that with some help from the Chinese and some cover from your boss, Barack Obama, who I actually believe is still running the show behind the scenes. And he's still lying, of course, and the lies have gotten more egregious. This, if that's too ancient history for you, take a look at this. Hunter was married to Kathleen. The late Bo, great guy, by the way, was married to Haley. So Bo dies. What happens next? Hunter starts hooking up with Haley, his sister-in-law the widow of his dead brother. This is insane stuff. This is sordid, bad stuff. This is the kind of thing, and look, families have stories, but this is the kind of thing that you say, you know what, we're not running for president with this kind of thing uh, hanging over our head, right? This was devastating inside the Biden family. Kathleen, Hunter's wife, now ex-wife, she wrote about it in her memoir. Yes, this is her words. Take a look. She writes as follows. If anything, I felt a strange vindication. This is when she found out. She suspected all along. Not only had I not been crazy, but it was so much worse than I could have imagined. How devastating that must have been for her. Her husband fooling around with the sister-in-law. It's a nightmare. But what does a guy like Joe Biden do with this? We just saw how easily lies come to him, how proud he is of himself. What did the Bidens come out with after this came out? They put out a public statement. We are all lucky that Hunter and Haley found each other as they were putting their lives together again after such sadness. They have mine and Jill's full and complete support, and we are happy for them. Now, fortunately, this is a lie. Can you imagine if they were really happy for them? But it is a lie. They will do anything, anything for power. Uh, this was the time to retire. And he didn't. And he didn't. And yet they say that Donald Trump is the liar. Right? 30,573. Hey, anytime you see one of those lists, you got to remember this situation. Who remembers when there was a government shutdown and I think Clemson football team won the championship or whatever? They had no White House chefs, so Trump sends them out to go buy a bunch of hamburgers. And it was a pretty cool moment, actually. Here's the president talking to the football players in the East Room of the White House. And I said, you guys aren't into salads. Or do I go out, Lindsey Graham and Tim Scott, do I go out and send out for about 1,000 Hamburgers, Big Macs. <laughs> so we actually did. We bought a thousand Burger King, all American companies. We literally have, and I don't know, have they started uh, eating and devouring? Have we? I wanted to see, so it was piled up a mile high. A mile high. All those hamburgers. Great moment, right? Lots of hamburgers for everybody. Look at what the fake news did. Look at this. President Trump's extravagant $3,000-300 sandwich celebration of Clemson University. According to our count, Trump spent about 
$2,911 on feeding the team. This includes 319 sandwiches, 177 of which were hamburgers, and fact check at two inches each, a thousand burgers would not reach one mile high. These are the kinds of things that found their way onto that silly list. Rolling Stone had a big write up Donald Trump and his lies about the volume of fast food hamburgers. Meanwhile, we have probably the worst liar in the history of the world in Joe Biden. And he gets away with it until today, actually, until today. It's over. It is over. He was still snowing a good chunk of the country. He can't anymore. Um, those who have been protecting him, that's over. It's gone. It's not going to happen. And the press, you know what? They're starting to feel aggressive. Not because they're brave, but because they've been authorized. But check this out. I'm confident. Thank you very much. That was intense. And they're all pretty much talking about the same thing. They want to know more. This image gave me a case of deja vu. In the final days of the Nixon administration, it was a very similar kind of atmosphere and scene. Uh, so there's a special counsel that they just picked, William Herr. He's going to be looking into uh, Joe Biden, although Devin Nunes, who will be joining us in a little bit, seems to think he might be compromised. Uh, in the meantime, very prominent Democrats. You know, remember, Joe Biden wasn't exactly everybody's pick initially. These people want to be president and they want to be bad. You think they're going to sit back right now? And what about this person, Michelle? It's been about her all along. This, I do believe, is the grand plan and it's about to take off. But we'll see about that. I'll be right back.